My name is Rachel and welcome back to Cute Apron Cooking. If this is your first time, then welcome. So glad to have you here. Each week I post new recipes. If you would like to get notified, just go ahead and click subscribe. Past two episodes, I've done a dessert and today we are going to try a savory dish and it is going to be kind of on the creative side. So what we're making is going to be a spicy pineapple mustard swordfish. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this recipe has a couple different components to it and we are going to start with the pickled chilies. Okay, for the pickled chilies, you're going to need some red wine vinegar, salt and sugar, two serrano chilies and two jalapeno peppers. Okay, for this, we're just gonna start by boiling the red wine vinegar and the salt and sugar. And once that comes up to a boil, you're gonna let it boil until it completely dissolves. Okay, so today we're gonna to be working with serranos and jalapenos. And when you're dealing with chilies, it's best to wear gloves because they have what's called capsaicin in them and that can irritate your skin and your eyes, but unfortunately I don't have any gloves, so I'll just have to wash my hands afterwards. The smaller that a chili or a pepper is, the spicier it'll be because there's a higher level of the capsaicin. And the membrane of the, the chilies will be spicier than the actual flesh of the chili. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these in half so they can absorb the vinegar a little bit better. And we'll set those aside until our vinegar mixture has came to a boil. Now that the vinegar is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it over the chilies so they can start pickling. And then we're going to just set those aside for later. Okay, so the next component that we're gonna start working on is the mustard pineapple glaze. And that's going to contain pineapple juice, white wine vinegar, soy sauce, fresh ginger, brown sugar, Dijon mustard, lime juice, and white pepper. Okay, for this, you're gonna start by boiling the pineapple juice, the white wine vinegar, soy sauce, ginger, and brown sugar. Once all those come to a boil, you're going to lower your heat so it's just a simmer, like a, a really light boil. And you're going to want to reduce that by half. And what that means is half of the moisture in your pan has evaporated and your sauce has thickened. After that has reduced, remove the mustard, let that cook for two minutes, remove it from the heat, add lime juice and white pepper. While our glaze is simmering, I wanna show you how to work with fresh ginger just a little bit. This is referred to as a knob of ginger. The outside skin is not usable. So if you want like a tablespoon in your recipe, you can just cut off a portion of it. You can use a peeler, like a vegetable peeler on this. I just prefer to use a knife and just go around and that will cut off any bad portions. Once you have your piece of peeled ginger, you can just go ahead and you'll wanna make thin cuts one way and then just start cutting the other way. And you'll keep working with this until you have a fine dice and that will go in your sauce. If you're not wanting to use a fresh knob of ginger, I know a lot of produce sections have ginger like in a tube, like it's a ginger paste. I've never used that, but that is an option if you don't wanna have to work with the uh, fresh ginger. There's a couple ways that you can tell if a pineapple is ripe or not. And it doesn't really have much to do with the actual color of the pineapple, it has more to do with the smell and like the feel of the pineapple. And another thing is if you can peel leaves out of the top of the pineapple easily, then your pineapple is ripe. So let's smell it, see if it smells good. It smells pineapple-y. That's what you want. If it smells green, like if it doesn't have a fruit smell, then you don't wanna use it just yet. And another one is if you squeeze the pineapple with one hand and it has a little bit of a give to it, then that's, that's good. You'll know it's right. And third, we're gonna check to see if any of these leaves come out and then we'll know for sure that it's ripe. So, yes, they are coming out. 
So we're good to go on our pineapple. Just lay it on its side. You're gonna to want to cut a pretty good section off of the top because it's gonna be very fibrous on the top. So just make sure you're working with a sharp knife. Just cut that. If you're doing a fruit display or anything like this, you can save the pineapple top. It makes a really nice centerpiece for a fruit display. Okay, then you're gonna to want to do the same. Cut the bottom. Try to cut it as straight as possible so you have a level place to stand your pineapple. Next, just take your knife and you're wanting to cut this outer layer off. Go, go deep enough so that it doesn't leave these brown spots. I'm gonna to have to cut a little bit more. You don't want that on your pineapple. Okay, now that my lovely pineapple is peeled and ready to go, we're going to cut this into half inch rings. While you're cutting your pineapple, go ahead and start getting your grill pan heated to about medium high heat. If you don't have a grill pan and you just wanna use a regular saute pan, that will work as well. It just won't get the uh, grill marks on it. Hannah, would you like some pineapple? Yes, I do. Okay, I will save that for you. Okay, now that we have all of our pineapple sliced, we're gonna go ahead and start grilling them. You'll want to grill them about one minute on each side. And once you lay them in your pan, you don't wanna move them around a lot or they're not gonna get the really beautiful defined grill marks. So go ahead and just put them in the pan, leave them for a minute, flip them, and let them cook for another minute. Oh my goodness, ain't it cute, y'all? Is it cute enough for a cute apron cooking show? I think so. Give it a thumbs up if you think so. Okay, now that we have our beautiful pineapples grilled up, we're gonna dice them to about a fourth of an inch. But when you're dicing, you don't want to include this section, the core, in your salsa. So you can simply start by cutting that section off, going around, and just removing the core. You can set that aside and then just continue dicing your pineapples into like small chunks. Okay, so our chilies are ready to start slicing for our salsa. You just, you want them really thin, like paper thin almost. If you're not going to be able to wear gloves when you work with these, make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. Okay, now that our pineapple has been grilled and diced and our chilies have been pickled and sliced, we can go ahead and combine all of our ingredients. So we do have the pineapple, green onion, chilies, rice, wine, vinegar, lime juice, and a little bit of olive oil. So I'm just gonna dump all this in here. I don't wanna start out with using all of the chilies. I wanna just go ahead and put about half of that in there because my pineapple was on the small side. That looks delicious already. We both have been snacking on pineapple this whole video, so I can't wait to try the entire dish together. Our pineapple glaze has thickened up beautifully. We're gonna go ahead and add our mustard. Now that it's cooked two minutes, we're gonna take it off the heat and just go ahead and pour in our lime juice. And while we're stirring, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of white pepper. Okay. When you're wanting to buy a swordfish, there's a couple of different things that you want to look for. Um, they can have a like a white or ivory color to a pink or orange color. And that, that's not a sign of anything good or bad. It's just based off of their diet. You also want to look for this circular pattern. Swordfish has a slightly sweet and mild flavor, but it's quite firm in texture, so it's great for grilling. It's not going to just fall apart on your grill. It's going to hold its shape. Okay, my pan is about medium high. We're going to go ahead and brush the swordfish with a little bit of olive oil and then salt and pepper on both sides. Just go ahead and take your fish spatula and lay the fillets in. Once you lay it, you don't want to move it at all or you'll lose your beautiful grill stripes. So go ahead and let this cook for about two minutes. Okay, now we're about ready to turn our swordfish over. We're gonna take a little bit of our mustard pineapple glaze 
and brush one side and then we'll turn it over and brush the other side as well. No matter what color your swordfish is in the beginning, it's always going to turn into a beige and a white once it's cooked. After you turn the swordfish, you'll want to let it cook for about four to five more minutes and then you'll be ready to plate. I went ahead and cooked a little bit of white rice. Now just take a little bit of your pineapple mustard glaze and drizzle it on the plate. If you want, you can drizzle a little bit on the white rice so it gives it a little flavor. The salsa will be quite juicy. You don't want all of that juice on your dish, so let that drain a little bit before. And then you can do it just on the side, like a little bit like this if you don't want a huge amount. Or if you want to display the salsa a little more, you can go ahead and put it all the way across like I did on this first one. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to try this. And so is my roommate. She's been telling me to hurry so she can eat it. Oh boy, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh wow. That is so amazing. But everything blends so well. Mm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this is probably the most exotic thing I've ever ate besides like sushi in Japan. Mm. <laughs> Definitely glad I picked this recipe. Me too. <laughs> okay, so what do you think, guys? It's a thumbs up. It's a winner. For us. Definitely a thumbs up for us. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.